Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. You could say that the central place in a church is not the sanctuary, is not the church office or a Sunday school room or the narthex. The central place of a church is the kitchen. Everything happens in the kitchen. The kitchen is a place where decisions are made, opinions are shared, friendships are born. It is the central focus of the majority of activities in the church because other than really to be honest worship, basically everything we do revolves somewhere around food. Funerals, food. You know, special events, what's there? Food. So the kitchen ends up being the central focus of the church. And that actually has been that way from the very beginning. Here we enter in our, uh, in our narrative reading into the book of Acts with the story of the martyrdom of Stephen. And though that is a very interesting, dramatic story, what I find really interesting was the verses just preceding that that give us a window into the early church. And what we have going on in the early church is a kitchen controversy, everybody. We got a kitchen controversy. See, we have already in early Christianity, and Christianity is maybe a you know, month old about this time, we, we already have two factions. We got two groups. We have Hellenists, who were Greek-speaking and Greek-influenced followers of Jesus, and we have the Hebrews. The Hebrews would be Jewish Christians from the nation of Israel, uh, like Jesus' disciples. And there's a quarrel over the distribution of food to the widows. Apparently, some of the Hellenist widows got forgotten in the midst of distribution, and so a controversy erupts. They're not happy. They think they've been shafted. And so the apostles get together and decide basically say, we need people to do this for us, and so they elect a group of people to pass out food to the widows so that people won't get forgotten anymore, and that's where Stephen comes into the picture. But let's notice a few things about this early, early church. The first thing is, you know, it's, it's really tempting when we look into the past to think that things were really great, like Say when the election happened this past November, I'm sure a lot of you were just disgusted by all the attack ads and things on television all the time. You probably thought to yourself, oh, back in the day, they acted so much more gentlemanly and nicer to each other. But if you examine early United States politics, it was actually worse. They went after each other in a very, very, very personal, personal way. So when we look back and think that, well, back then it was a little nicer, that's not really the case at all. We are tempted when we look back at the early church to just imagine all these people gathered together in perfect harmony, praising God. But we see already that there are factions, and there are conflicts, and there are quarrels, and there are issues. But should that kind of, like, that couldn't possibly depress us. You know, we see that there are factions and quarrels in the church today. And we might think, oh, geez, even from the very beginning, kind of make us depressed. But in actuality, it shouldn't. Because despite the quarrels, despite the divisions, despite the conflicts, God is working, right? It says in the reading that their numbers were increasing daily. So even though these sinful, normal people were having conflicts, God was still working. The Holy Spirit was still working. And even though we have conflicts today, and many of them are quite large, God is still working. The Holy Spirit is still working. The gospel of Jesus Christ is being proclaimed despite those conflicts. We also see in the early church that already there's a focus on people outside of themselves. There's focus on the needy, right? The quarrel comes because people are concerned about giving food to the widows, to the poor, to the needy. Just as we run our mission madness here, trying to raise funds to help organizations that reach out to the poor and needy, so too in the early church did they focus on those who needed help. 
Because after all, that's really a part of our call. To ignore people who need help is to ignore Christ's call to follow him. We are to love our neighbor as ourselves. And lastly, we see in the early church that God calls normal, ordinary people to proclaim his word. Stephen was, for no better word, a waiter. That was, he, that was his job. His job was to bring food to people. What's that? That's a waiter. But God called him, this, in the midst of his waiting, to tell others about Jesus, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen. And even though that came with, came with a pretty big price for Stephen, you and I are called to do the same. We are ordinary people with ordinary flaws and ordinary lives. But God calls all of you to proclaim Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And there is risk in that. There are people who may not want to hear your message. There, are, there may be people who will come back at you. But we see from the very beginning that God calls all of us to share this gospel that we receive. To not only share that gospel, but to be the hands and feet of God. That despite conflict in the world, to go and help the needy. Proclaim the good news. Love our neighbor. We see from this very glimpse in the early church, that in reality, nothing much has changed in 2,000 years. We are sinful people who will quarrel with each other from time to time. <laughs> God calls ordinary people to share the good news. And God calls us to look upon others who need help, to reach out and love and need, to help the poor and needy. But most of all, just as it was in the beginning, the Holy Spirit is at work. The Holy Spirit is at work in you. The Holy Spirit is at work in the church. And the Holy Spirit calls all of us to faith in Jesus Christ, who died and gave his life so that we might have eternal life. For that, we can say thanks be to God. Amen.